Welcome to the Morning Meditation by Dr. Earl White with your host, Missionary Joe Consford. Some Bible Names of Believers, Part 3, Acts eleven twenty six, And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year that they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. We looked at our last two meditations at the verse that deals with the origin of the name Christian in Scripture. I will use that same text because this is part three of that meditation. We are called pilgrims. 1 Peter 2.11 says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. Let's note the following. First, we note the affection that Peter had for those to whom he writes. One of the outstanding features of our Lord's discipling the twelve is his emphasis on love. He said in John 13, 35, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Peter is speaking the truth in love. He has learned his lesson about loving the brethren. Secondly, Peter's attitude stands out in his exhortation to those he calls dearly beloved. He says, I beseech you. This is used in the sense of entreating someone. It is not an order, it is a pleading. Peter is saying, Dearly beloved, I plead with you. This is the kind of approach that makes one want to listen and consider seriously doing what's being asked. Grace pleads, law threatens. There was a time when Peter would not have pled. He would have exercised apostolic authority and threatened anyone who challenged him. Thirdly, the word pilgrim is a term by which Christians were called. The word pilgrim is one who comes from a foreign country into a city or land to reside there by the side of the natives. The word strangers describes further what the pilgrim is. He is a stranger. He originated in another country. I was reading one of Watchman Nee's book where he made a point I want to share with you that fits the word pilgrim and its definition. John fifteen nineteen, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore... The world hateth you. The particle if is a second class condition. The word if in a second class condition means if and it is not true. A paraphrase is if ye, the plural you, were of this world and you are not. Then follows the world would love his own. Jesus is saying that ye are not of this world anymore, and this is why the world does not love you. Let me ask you a question. Has the world changed its attitude toward you since you've been saved? This is a question, the answer to which makes a difference between heaven and hell. The words, but because ye are not of, of is a preposition denoting origin. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. Jesus is saying, you did not originate in this world like the unsaved. Next, Jesus tells them how this change in their origin took place. But I have chosen you out of the world. When we were born again. We were born from above, from heaven as a country. So when one is saved, his spiritual birth gives him a new origin. 
we had a heavenly accent in our speech and our walk unveils a different culture. Have you ever noticed that people who have a different walk and accent make you uneasy? Our doctrine and walk infuriate the unsaved world, and this is what Jesus is saying. We are called heirs. Paul says in Romans 8.17, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. The word heir, according to Strong's, in messianic usage, one who receives his allotted possession by right of sonship. The word joint heirs with Christ means that the believer is by right of birth an equal heir with Christ. Jesus is the Son of God, and we are sons with Him because the new birth puts us in Him. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, All things are become new. The words in Christ describe the believer's permanent position. He also has Christ's righteousness imputed to him. And because he is in Christ, he shares what Christ inherits because his incarnation, sinless life, death, and resurrection. Peter refers to this in 1 Peter 1. 3-5 Three through five. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. The believer's origin is in heaven, and that is where the inheritance will be. Next, we're called instruments. 2 Timothy 2.21 If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. The word vessel is used to emphasize that the believer, like the vessel, is made to hold contents. The contents in a vessel may vary, but the contents in the believer are as compared to the vessel is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wherever the believer goes, he has in him the gospel of Christ that will save any person who will believe it. Notice what this verse is saying about the vessel. First of all, look at the lead statement. If any man therefore purge himself of these, the if here is a third class condition. It is if, and maybe it is true, and maybe it isn't. This simply means that Paul is declaring a truth that there is a condition on man's part. If he's going to be a vessel of honor, it is a condition on whether a man is willing to purge himself from these. Secondly, what does the word these refer to? The two prior verses answer this question. 2 Timothy two nineteen and 20. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. The words foundation of God standeth sure is speaking of the foundation of the church. Jesus Christ is the foundation of the church. 
Jesus says in Matthew sixteen eighteen, And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, a word meaning little rock, and upon this rock, a huge building stone, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The name Peter literally means a stone. The words, and upon this rock, Jesus uses a definite word for rock. When referring to Peter, he uses petros, and means a small stone compared to the next word. When Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, he uses the word petra. The word means a rock, cliff, or ledge, a large stone. Now, if you can picture this, when Jesus said, Thou art Peter, Petros, and he had a finger pointed at Peter, but upon this rock, Petra, he had a finger pointed to himself. Now, to support this, Peter says in 1 Corinthians 3.11, For other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus is definitely the foundation of the church. The words, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, is a statement that suggests strongly that this passage has to do with the saved and unsaved in the church. If not, why would Peter say, the Lord knoweth them that are his? This being true, the vessel of honor, are those who belong to the Lord. The Lord knows them and fills them as vessels to take them the message of salvation. The vessels of dishonor are those who do not belong to him. He knows they are not. They have stuff in them as vessels, but they do not have the power of God upon the message that they carry. They may be the PhDs and the very skilled in public speech and organization, and they may build big churches, but there is a good chance when the rapture takes place, they won't be down 10 in Sunday school the next Sunday. I'm not a prophet. What I said is just an opinion. I base it on this. It is doubtful that anyone will be saved listening to a lost man preach the gospel. It is not just the fact of the gospel that saves, it is also the power of God upon the message that is preached. Here is what God says about this matter. 1 Corinthians 2, 1-5 And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Thirdly, God uses his people to carry the message of salvation to the unsaved world. The words of our text, 2 Timothy 2.21, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Some things this verse definitely teaches. God uses his people to spread the message. Any saved man can tell an unsaved man how he himself was saved. God can and does use our witness to bring others to a saving experience. A witness does not just give four or five steps to tell another how to be saved. This witness is given in the power of the Holy Spirit. He tells him that these things are what he believed to be saved. He was there when it happened. He says, 
This is what I believe to be saved, and I want to tell you from personal experience that it worked because it worked on me. The next thing states what one must do to be an effective witness. If a man, a believer in Christ, one whom God knows is his, purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet or fit for the master's use. The word purge means to cleanse thoroughly. It is an aorist active subjunctive verb. The aorist tense refers to a point of time. It may take place in one's home or at church. A personal worker may lead an unsanctified saved person to repent and ask God to cleanse him in the blood of Jesus. The active voice means that the unsanctified believer makes the decision to do this and, by an act of his will, decides to seek restoration so that he can be a vessel of honor. The subjunctive is the potential mood. It is one of those things where one has a choice. He is given a call through exposure to the word of God and the conviction of the Holy Spirit. If he turns the invitation down, he will remain as is. If he turns from his sins and comes to the Lord confessing his sin, he will be cleansed and made fit for the master's use. No one is made to serve the Lord. God seeks volunteers. You can reject God's call to service, but you cannot reject what happens to you as a result of your decision. Hebrews 12, 6 8. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God deals with you as his sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Are you an instrument in the Lord's service? God wants to use us. It is a decision we have to make. May the Lord bless these words to our hearts today. Join us tomorrow at themorningmeditation.com and let's meditate on the word together.